us anymore, Toto. Happy Friday, everybody. We are at Kennedy Space Center. We've got some rockets behind us. We've got the International Space Station here. We are out here today for a special party called Yuri's Night. But for the next 45 minutes, we're going to cram as much space in as we can. And Yuri's Night is actually to celebrate Yuri Gagarin. Maybe it's Gagarin. Maybe I'm just completely butchering this. He was the first human in space in 1961, and they're hosting parties all over the world. Our party tonight is at the Kennedy Space Center. Just a little bit underneath the Space Shuttle Atlantis. Astronaut training experience is fully open now. We did some of the exhibits in here while it was in beta, soft opening. You can check out that video here. And it looks like the space shop has moved from this big building back here now. It's interesting. These shirts are made out of recycled bottles. That's insane. This one too. That is so cool. So I asked in the temporary shop what they were doing with this site. They're just remodeling. It'll be back. Let's see, I don't think this building is open now. Ah, oh, let's roll. We're going to Mars. The moon! That doesn't look like it's made out of cheese. Here's Mars. And this big model is the SLS. Here are its space exploration vehicles. Spacer. There's Athlete. There's not the company that Jim from the office started. Eat fresh. And here's the space exploration vehicle. Here's Sojourner. Spirit. Curiosity. We've got the rocket garden, space dots. Rockets, 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 rockets. Now we've killed the last hour getting air conditioning in the car. Now we're totally psyched. JFK is waiting for us. And behind JFK is Atlantis. Home tonight. Space beer. We're ready to launch. Darth Nihilus is here. Darth Nihilus. The Empire is here. There's no contraband. <laughs> Stormtrooper. It's Jason and a Stormtrooper. These aren't the droids you're looking for. <laughs> we are so close to space beer right now, I can taste it. This is the first beer that is being designed to be consumed in space. It's from Four Pines in Australia. Oh my God, it's Bosk. They have telescopes set up here. You can see the stars. And here is Atlantis. Although this tank is not really from Atlantis, but we're going to the exhibit. Look, it's Phasma. Holy cow, we're loaded with Star Wars people here. Whoa! That's you, right? We've got to go back! Moon Man, Clone Trooper. You're gonna burn your hand off that way. We've got an Airstream set up here. Look at all this. This is really cool. Do you know what's in here, Campbell? Uh, I believe there might be a space shuttle. The best that? thing in this building, besides space beer, 
air conditioning. It's uh, set to like permanent nighttime in here in Florida. There is Atlantis. No major reveal here today, but we do have an awesome video with the show and the reveal, and you can check that out here. Here is Atlantis. We're gonna be partying underneath it, but up top here we have an art show going on. A little Ziggy Stardust in my shadow. There's a better look. Mickey Astronaut. Look at the sign, it literally says Campbell. It has your name on this piece of art. There's the Hubble. Oh my God, they're following us. They must have that rebel as prisoner. Sweet. I move past the rockets. I can hear R2 somewhere over here. There he is. There's a picture of Yuri, and it's gone. This is the space beer. So this is it, Vostok, space beer, the world's first beer for space. You can go to the Indiegogo campaign that we're gonna link below. So those are the special bottles that will be needed to be able to consume this beer space without it exploding or without needing to suck it out of a pack like you normally do. There you go. So, I'm going to try the stout. It's good. Very creamy. It's got a nice, like, <laughs> mealy type of taste to it. Definitely awesome. It's good. The astronauts are going to be pretty awesome. This is Alicia, Four Pines. She's going to show us the bottle. Does the top come off or? Oh, okay. Now, if we go to the Indiegogo campaign, you can donate money and get one of these bottles. I think it's the $90 price point right now. For the bottle itself. Yeah. Yes. Or you can get the bottle with contents inside of it. It's amazing. So we're standing here with Jared, founder of Four Pines. Yeah. Space beer. And this is the first individual that ever tested beer in zero gravity. So Todd being the, the first person to ever when we're doing all our trials of space beer. Okay. So as Todd says, the natural human instinct is to go like that, but nothing came out. So these little plastic bottles, so Todd was squeezing the seat. So, so, but what, we want to get the feeling in space that you can do that, like you do on Earth. Sure. Simple as that. So, so this uses the, sort of the, uh, the surface tension around it to like wick it. Yeah, and, and, then, and then there's like a wicking mechanism and that kind of brings it all together. There's food here too. We've got pretzels. Snack mix, chips, more snack mix, Sour Patch Kids, gummy worms, M&Ms, gumdrops, Pop Rocks. This is Bob Cavana. How cool is it to have Yuri's name underneath this first shuttle I have? Alright, so because this is Yuri's night, we're only going to speak Russian tonight, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in space or flying in space? Yes. Will Yuri be here tonight? Unfortunately, no. But, uh, you know, I think that's pretty awesome. You know, Yuri Gagarin uh, was the first human to fly in space, and that was April 12, 1961. 
Uh, technically, though, you know, his spacecraft, he never landed in his spacecraft. He ejected out of the Vostok and came down in the parachute. John Glenn was the first human to orbit the Earth and actually land in his spacecraft. <laughs> now, this is probably one of the most exciting times in, in the space program. And when you consider, in all of human history, only three nations have sent humans to space. The United States, Russia, and China. And today in the United States, we have three U.S. companies building human spacecraft to take humans to space. Lockheed Martin with the Orion, Boeing with the CST-100 Starliner, and SpaceX with the Crew Dragon. Yeah. And, and there's more beyond that that are coming too. But I mean, that, that's pretty darn amazing. And you know, we hope to have flights the commercial crew program hopes to get our test flights up this year. Um, we're on track to get some test flights. We'll see how that works. And hopefully we'll get uh, Orion flying on the SLS at the end of 2019. But uh, by this summer, all the infrastructure necessary to launch and uh, to process and launch the uh, SLS and Orion will be completed at the Kennedy Space Center. And then we'll just finish up the software to help make that happen. But exciting time. And then look at Blue Origin, building that big facility, and they're going to be launching off 36. I mean, it's just, there is a lot going on right now. I think it's a great time for our nation and for space flight. We're on the moon. That's going to be pretty darn cool. And that'll allow access to and from the lunar surface, but it'll also allow us to go on to Mars from there. And this is a cooperative effort. We're going to be working with the commercial companies. It could be a partnership between government and commercial. It's going to be pretty awesome. And it, what we're trying to set up is a sustainable program. It's not like the <clears throat> 60s and 70s when we went to the moon and, and that was it. But we want to be able to sustain it and keep it going and not have it end. Anyone else? Why Mars? Well, because we need to establish a presence in our solar system beyond our home planet. Uh, John Young, one of my, uh, I couldn't believe it, when I got selected to be an astronaut, I worked for John Young. I mean, Gemini, Apollo, his first space shuttle, and he's my boss. And John used to say, single planet species will not survive. And uh, I, I, we just, we need to, it's, it's in our DNA to explore, to move beyond the bounds uh, of where we are and uh, continue to expand. So uh, I think that's why, to learn more. So my name is Loretta Whitesides. I'm the creator of Yuri's Night. So it's my pleasure to welcome you here. It's our first time being at, at, under the Illuminus. We, so I just got fresh off doing a party under the shuttle in LA under the Space Shuttle Endeavor. Just flew in yesterday and ready to do a, our you know, parties under two shuttles on two coasts. So um, without further ado, I'm going to invite up our, our next astronaut to dazzle and deliver you. Her name is Nicole Stodd. She's a veteran of a shuttle mission and an International Space Station mission over 100 days in space. She's also an artist, and she's also featured on Nat Geo's current uh, new show. How many of you guys have seen One Strange Rock? <laughs> One Strange Rock is awesome. It's like the new cosmos. Um, it helps us appreciate our, our, our incredible planet. And the episode that they aired last week featured Nicole Stodd um, talking about space rocks and space storms. We were going to show you a clip from that, the compliments of Nat Geo, but um, don't quite have the projector going, so we're gonna, you're going to have to imagine how awesome she is and this clip is. Or you can go home and watch of your, her, Nicole's episode on natgeo.com. So without further ado, I'm going to turn over to Nicole Stodd to now try to do her whole talk without any slides. Give her a warm welcome. No pressure there, huh? <laughs> That's funny. You know what? This makes the notes even more important, I think. <laughs> See if we can kind of go along without, uh, without slides. So I am so excited to be here. Um, you know, Yuri's Night, 57 years ago when the first human, Yuri Gagarin, left this planet for space. And, you know, I know, I, you know, we always want to make it about ourselves, right? So as an almost 57 year old, I, how cool is it that as long as I've been alive, people have been going to space? I think that's pretty awesome. And you know, we've come a long way. When you think about it, this April 12th date that we had yesterday, I mean, it's pretty impressive. You know, Yuri went to space on April 12th. 
37 years ago, uh, John Young, um, Bob just mentioned him, John Young and Bob Crippen, STS-1 from this very place here at KSC. How cool is that? And then, you know, you had this, this, this one person, uh, Yuri Gagarin, on his own, goes to space. And look at where we are now. We have, for the past 20 years, this International Space Station circling our planet 16 times a day for the last 20 years with crews of people from all over the world living together peacefully, successfully. As long as my son has been alive, we have had people continuously living off our planet. And not just from here in the U.S., but from 15 different countries around the world, and that is pretty impressive. Four Pines out of Australia, and their Vostok space beer, and their Zergy space bottle. So here, in his space suit, space beer costume, we have Jaren. Come on up, Jaren. <laughs> Thanks for all the beer, man. Absolute pleasure. How is everyone tonight? Now, when I was originally going to walk up, before a stormtrooper kicked over the um, projector and ruins ev everyone's um, uh, projection, I actually had, so I used the force on them, they're all dead now. Um, I actually had this really cool track playing and I, I need a little bit of crowd participation, all right? One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven, eight, 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 rock. <laughs> Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. Rock. The clock tonight. So, the reason for, and that, how much more cooler would have that made me if I had walked up on stage with that playing in the background? <laughs> now, the reason for that is seven years before Yuri Gagarin went into space, uh, that song was released. So, that was just a little bit of trivia, and that was probably the second coolest thing that's ever happened on April the 12th. <laughs> but anyway, so why are we here? So the reason that we're here is us and our joint venture partner, Sabre Astronautics, they're the space guys. About eight years ago, we embarked on a mission to create the world's first beer for space. So that's us. Yeah. Now, why beer in space? That's probably the biggest thing all of you are thinking, yeah? No? No, okay. <laughs> Thanks, good night. Everyone have a good night. <laughs> no, no, no. So, so basically, why not? That's the question, yeah? But I suppose going back a little bit, 20,000 years or so, we've been talking about 57, but I'll, I'll fast. I'm going to go year by year. So has everyone got a, a week or so to sit by and just go through the... No. So, uh, right. So beer was invented 20,000 years ago. It's where humanity stopped being hunter-gatherers and they actually planted their roots. Because they wanted to farm, they wanted, they wanted beer, yeah? And from that point... No, 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 that, that... That's a direct line. No, no, they became social hunter-gatherers, not drunk hunter-gatherers. Thank you in the front row. I've got a heckler in the front row. Everyone loves a heckler, hey? Let's hear it for the heckler. But everywhere that humanity has gone, Throughout history, almost without fail, that when they have conquered new lands and we're speaking about where humanity has to go in the future, it has been food, water, shelter, clothing, and then guess what? No green tea, you're all wrong. But then it's beer. So, so basically, Beer is this thing that is just, it's got this thread through our entire lineage of history, yeah? So it's only natural. So the Nicoles of the world, they are our modern day Christopher Columbuses. It's just we're living in their time, so we're not actually looking backwards, right? But in 20, 30 years time, when we're sitting in commercial space flights, when we're sitting in space hotels, we're drinking in space bars, It'll be those ladies and those men that actually pave the way for all of us to just enjoy it and, and not actually have to struggle in it. So, about seven years ago, we've been in this for eight years, and this is actually crazy because we only just met tonight. The guy in the red sash there, look at him, his name's Todd Romberger. Now, Todd Romberger, he is the first human to ever drink beer specifically designed for zero gravity in zero gravity conditions on zero G. So I actually want to toast to Todd Romberger because this is the first time that we've met Todd, Todd and I have met tonight. 
So there's been a whole host of testing, blah blah blah, etc. etc. Right? Now we've put all the we've put now put all the elements together. So this liquid here, or beer, this is the four pine stout. It'll be launching in uh, uh, Florida in probably the next 30 days or so. If we took that into space, not only do is it uncomfortable, not only did Todd prove that it's actually safe for humans, and not only when I say uncomfortable, you wet burp with it, and not only can you not taste it, um, but you also can't get it out of the can or, or the bottle unless you unless you compress the uh, the volume, right? So, so we're now fast forwarding, you know. Space, space uh, astronauts at this point, they've been using squeeze bottles to actually get liquid out of, of uh, their you know, coffee, water, green tea that I mentioned before. Um, but what we want to do, we actually want to create something that feels like an Earth experience. It's a fixed state steady bottle, a fixed, sorry, fixed volume bottle that actually feels like Earth. So Todd explains when he did the world's first trials and he put the bottle to his mouth, Nothing came out because of surface tension. So we actually, have, we've designed over the last sort of six years or so, a bottle that can, can actually be drunk and feel like a human experience. So right now we're actually, we're, we're launched that on Indiegogo with a crowdfunding campaign. So you guys can actually be and own the world's first batch of space beer right now on Indiegogo. The talking is done. It's now dance time. to get a beer underneath Spatial Atlantis. I'll be right back. building and start heading home here. We need to go back in time. Check this out. What? That looks pretty amazing. Get rid of that stray light. Can't yeah, it's busy. Can't looking up, can you see what he's looking at? <laughs> Just don't fall. Yeah, try not to. I took a look as well. What you can't see here is a star cluster. It is ridiculously far away. It was amazing to see. All stars that are kind of like brother and sister, same color stars. Up there, it was the beehive cluster. That was 577 light years away. It's like completely empty in here, except for the people that are leaving. Rocket garden at night. I've never been out here when it's been nobody here. Space Denny's, space eggs and space pancakes. Space Denny's. Okay, so it's Saturday morning, day after Yuri's night out. Um, that was a really unique, fun event. Um, I love going to see the Space Shuttle Atlantis, so anytime that you can get in to see that exhibit is amazing, but 
uh, being able to um, have the space beer and have the party of uh, like-minded space enthusiasts um, underneath this, the, the space shuttle was something else um, really cool. Um, I, I had not heard of the Yuri's Night stuff um, before um, this year, so I'm happy that um, Campbell turned me on to the event. And uh, I look forward to going next year because I have to uh, imagine that the event's going to get bigger and bigger. Um, as far as the space beer, um, really cool. We spoke with uh, the founder of um, Four Pines uh, for uh, a few minutes. We didn't connect again um, through the night except for kind of casually saying hello and everything. Uh, and I had intended to try to get footage on film. But I didn't think that anything that uh, would have been said would have been better than what we captured um, in his uh, podium speech. So, I mean... For people like me that uh, love space and love beer, um, that was kind of like a chocolate in your peanut butter type of moment where it, it's uh, it's an awesome, awesome concept. I will be buying into at least the Indiegogo campaign for the bottle um, alone just to have that as um, a souvenir. So in any event, thanks a lot for coming along. Thank you for all of your likes and your comments and your subscriptions. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Have a great night. We'll see you guys.